One of the things that I'm very interested in is, is the concept of identity in politics. That is, how people allow themselves to be mobilized in politics on the basis of something that people, theorists, as well as, as ordinary, in ordinary talk, we call their identities. So uh, I try and define the concept of identity in terms of people's fundamental commitments, their deepest commitments. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in a, a notion of, of identity in which people endorse certain things about themselves um, and make them into commitments. So it could be their gender or it could be their uh, uh, nationality or, or their race. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, I'm very interested in commitments that form around some basic features uh, of one's life and how they are mobilized, how one allows oneself to be mobilized on the basis of endorsing those features. Um, and, and so I define the concept of identity in terms of one's deep abiding uh, commitments uh, and how they're mobilized in politics. Uh, one of my interests is what happens to our liberal doctrines and liberal ways of understanding uh, the polity uh, when one finds people mobilized on the basis of identity. Um, and I think there's, there's some very difficult issues uh, that liberalism has got to deal with, but has not really developed the conceptual resources to deal with, uh, with uh, identity politics. And so that's one of my uh, central interests. One of the things that I think one has to uh, analyze when one talks about Muslim identity is the extent to which it's imposed on people by uh, things that they have nothing to do with. Um, so the media, for instance, uh, uh, generates a notion of, of Islamic identity which people may not themselves feel or endorse in any way. An unrepresentative minority can become the representative voice and, and the, the articulation of an identity of a whole community. Um, so it's a failure of, of the democratization in communities, that an unrepresentative group can become the image or the voice of a much larger group, um, even though it's a fragment of it. And how that happens, I think, should be analyzed. How to resist it should be analyzed. Uh, because it is, on the face of it, a very undemocratic phenomenon, uh, that most people are not fundamentalists or absolutists, uh, yet uh, Islamic fundamentalism becomes somehow representative of the image of Islam. And uh, so, so we need some way in which what gets to be the representative image comes from what most people feel and want and believe. And it's very hard to arrange that. It's a kind of, we need a form of democratization within the community, but it's very hard to democratize communities, you know, because there are no representative institutions within communities in the way they are uh, uh, elsewhere in, in society and in, and in politics. But democracy is a deeper notion than these formal procedural uh, elements, and and. The only way to define democracy substantially, and not just formally, is to see it as a, a society in which ordinary people have uh, the control of decisions as to all the aspects, the, all the major aspects of their lives, the material aspects of their lives, the spiritual aspects of their lives. 
and that they have real input in the decisions that shape their lives in these major respects. And that's what democracy is. And uh, it's not at all obvious that just having these formal procedures of democracy gives you th that further thing. So the question you're asking is to what are the deeper issues of democracy? Well, I, I mean, I think a lot depends on, and so just take for instance the fact that most people have almost absolutely no control over the material aspects of their lives. They, make, they have no choices, virtually. Um, all those choices are made by corporations, the state, and so on. So, uh, so there's a real sense in which formal democracies are not substantial democracies. Uh, and so when we congratulate ourselves on having constitutions and elections and so on, it's certainly a very major achievement, much to be cherished and, and applauded, but it's, it's not a sufficient understanding of democracy. I think the Arab revolts are not revolting against uh, fundamentalist Islamic images uh, or anything like that. They're not particularly to do with fundamentalist Islam, but <coughs> the <coughs> they're not, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, concentrated on that at all. They're concentrated against many, many uh, decades of, of basically authoritarian, tyrannical governments. Um, and they're real popular movements uh, where they will be, at, and, and I think uh, Islamist elements in it are relatively minimal in, in almost all these places. And, uh, but it is a real question uh, in what direction this will go. One thing I do feel sure of is that if these movements are not successful and if they are put down, uh, then I fear that there will be a very major fundamentalist resurgence in these societies because, because I think it will be one more failure of secular, secular based movements. Uh, the earlier one was the Arab nationalists, uh, which it was since their failure and because of their failure to be effective that fundamentalist Islam emerged in many of these Arab countries. And I think if these democratic uh, social and, and uh, popular resistance movements fail, uh, and if they're put down, then there will be the feeling that secular-based movements are just never going to succeed in these regions of the world, and so there'll be a revival of uh,